Um, so today I'll be looking at uh, the economic effects of uh, Europe's economic integration agreements. That's really just a fancy word that economists use for trade agreements. Um, so I'll be short with the motivation. I guess you all know this picture is from the WTO. So there has been a boom of uh, trade agreements worldwide, especially since the 1990s. So this is uh, the cumulative of uh, trade agreements in force. Um, Europe has been a driving force behind this. Um, in the late 60s, 55% um, more or less of all trade agreements uh, in force were European. And then of course it has gone down as other players started to uh, um, sign uh, more trade agreements. So that is why we will be looking at Europe. Um, in numbers, in 2012, 23% of all European imports and 27 of exports uh, were controlled by trade agreements. So that's by trade agreements that are into force already. And then when we take into account the ones that did not enter into force yet or that are being negotiated, they grew up to 58 and 70 percent. Uh, and that's from 2012. So TTIP is not in that yet. So the numbers would be even higher. Um, so that brings me to my uh, research question. How do the European uh, trade agreements affect uh, the bilateral trade flows of goods between the EU27 and third countries? So we'll be looking at the trade in goods. Um, my contribution to the literature, so up to date, actually no paper has systematically studied the trade effects of Europe um, trade agreements with third countries. There has been a lot of uh, studies that look at part, but not really everything together. Um, also, we will look at the impact of trade agreements on total trade flows and also on the margins, but more on that later. Uh, we allow for differential timing, so we'll look at incitation and reaction effects. Uh, we go beyond measuring the effects of trade agreements with one dummy. Uh, as Tristan explained yesterday, we should not just put one dummy in there. Um, here I'll try to uh, differentiate a little bit by looking at different types of um, trade agreements. Also by, by looking at the trade effects of each trade agreement separately. And then by looking at the effects on each European country individually. Um, yes, so first of all, um, the classification uh, that economists um, use, it's um, by the details of integration. Um, so there's preferential trade agreements, one-way and two-way. Um, because Europe does not have a lot of two-way preferential trade agreements, we'll take these two categories together. And then there's free trade agreements, and then there's customs unions and economic markets. There's also economic unions, but Europe doesn't have any different countries. Um, then there's another classification. Um, this is uh, more according to the names that Europe gives to their trade agreements. And so we distinguish between uh, economic partnerships agreements, um, association agreements, stabilization and association agreements, free trade agreements, uh, new generation free trade agreements, customs unions, and economic markets agreements. Um, so this is a little table with all the uh, agreements between Europe and then the rest of the world. Uh, the date is when the agreement entered into force. Um, and then these are the two uh, classifications that we'll be using. So as you can see from um, the early 90s on, it really has uh, exploded. Um, and then the margins of trade. So um, we are obviously interested in how trade is going to change uh, due to the trade agreements. And when trade, for example, increases, there's they could be caused by two things. First of all, um, the number of products that you are exporting uh, to a country could go up, or then uh, the average value that you are exporting per product could go up. So we'll try to disentangle both of those things. Um, so the intensive margin is what we call the average value per product, and then the extensive margin is the number of products. Um, so a little bit about methodology. So the standard way of um, assessing the economic effects of trade agreements is through the gravity model. So this is more or less the same gravity model as we saw yesterday with Tristan. And there are some problems with this standard uh, one, uh, but I'll spare you the details. Um, 
the most important one um, for my paper, I guess, is that um, uh, trade agreements are not exogenous. Um, two, country pairs, uh, two countries that want to enter into agreements, um, of course, they're not randomly selected. They have, in general, a reason to do so. Um, so we have to pay attention to this. Um, and we will um, solve this problem by using a panel um, and by introducing um, three sets of fixed effects. Uh, and this brings us to this baseline model. So on the left hand side, we have, um, we're estimating each uh, equation three times, once with the total bilateral trade flows, and once with the intensive margin, and once with the expensive margin. Uh, that's the left hand side. And so on the right hand side for the baseline model, we're first uh, at PTA, FTA, and uh, custom union studies. And then we have a bunch of fixed effects which are going to keep everything constant so we can just look at the effects of the trade agreements. Um, and then we'll do some extensions. Um, we include lags and leads. We'll look at the different classification and then the separate agreements and countries. The data, um, so we have data from 1988 uh, till 2013. Um, they come from Eurostat, from the COMICS database. So they're important export trade flows um, between uh, the EU27 and the rest of the world. And there's C and 8 um, data, so that's very detailed data on the product level. Uh, and that means that we'll be able to construct um, high quality, intensive and extensive margins. And then uh, the data on the trade agreements is coming from, uh, well, I looked at a bunch of different sources, which are McGill, WTO, TAC, EFTA, and the European Commission. All right, then the results, I guess that's the most important part. <laughs> um, so first of all, um, when we look at the results for e imports and exports, they are different. Um, this is quite um, logical, I guess, because uh, trade agreements have different stipulations for imports and exports. Um, second, we see that customs unions and uh, free trade agreements have a bigger effect on trade flows uh, than preferential trade agreements. This uh, holds for both imports and exports. Um, this is a finding that um, is already has been found in the literature before. Um, so it's good that it's consistent. Uh, it's also quite logical, again, that deeper integration will have a larger effect on trade flows. Um, then we see that uh, PTAs have a negative effect on imports, uh, and uh, they also decrease exports uh, on, on average with 23%. Um, we see that FTAs and customs unions don't have a statistically significant impact on imports, but they do on exports. And here, uh, FTAs increase exports on average with 20%, and the customs unions with 32%. 32%. Uh, these are the contemporaneous <coughs> effects. When we then add lags, uh, we see that uh, PTAs have an effect up to five years after they have entered into first and FTAs even up to 10 years after they have entered into force. This is uh, basically for two reasons. First of all, a lot of agreements have stipulations that only phase in after five or 10 years. So then that's one reason. Another reason is that trade agreements tend to change the terms of trades, and that takes a while also to uh, play. Uh, we see that customs unions have no lag effects. Um, and then um, looking at the margins, we see that the negative effects of um, uh, preferential trade agreements come from the intensive margin. Um, so that's the average value per product again. And then the positive effects of the customs unions are mainly driven by the extensive margin. For the FTAs, we find an initial effect on the intensive margin, and then we find a lag effect on the extensive margin. Uh, this is again an effect that has been found before in the literature um, and that is probably because it's easier when you have a trade agreement to first increase your volume that you're trading and then later on start exporting new products. Um, so this is the, these are the numbers of the baseline model, so how to read it. Um, this is the effect on the total trade, this is on the intensive margin and the extensive margin. 
um, BTAs, FTAs, and custom unions. And then here we add five euro flags. And here we add five euro lags and ten euro lags. Um, yes. Uh, this is um, on the imports. And then uh, we see um, this is on the exports. Um, yes. So again, we see, for example, the customs unions, and um, they have uh, an effect that mostly plays on the extensor margin. Okay. Um, then this was the baseline model. Now we'll change the classification of the trade agreements. Um, and so I'll maybe start with showing the results. And um, so here um, we have the table you read in the same way. So we have a GSP. This is the GSP uh, scheme and uh, economic partnership agreements. This is GSP plus and everything with arms. This is FTAs, uh, stabilization and association agreements and association agreements. There's also another category with customs unions, but that's the same results as before. So I didn't have space. <laughs> Um, so here we see um, that the negative effect of uh, the PTAs uh, comes mostly from the GSG plus and the other thing that arms. When we disentangle, we don't really see a big effect anymore of the normal GSP scheme. Um, moreover, we see that FTAs have a uh, positive effect still on um, imports. So now it is a little bit to listen to you. Significant. It's also a lot bigger in magnitude. We see that the stabilization <coughs> agreements have a big positive effect on um, trade. Uh, this is the contemporaneous effect, but when we look at the lags, we see that this effect is offset by uh, negative lag effects. And then we see that the association agreements don't really have an effect, um, except for in the lags. Again, here we see a lag effect. Um, yes. <coughs> so this is for the imports, and then when we go to the exports, um, we see um, a similar um, thing here with the GSP and the GSP plus schemes. So the GSP has a very small effect, and it's mostly the GSP plus that has a negative effect on the trade flows. Um, then uh, here, the stabilization uh, agreements have a, a negative effect, which is in contrast to the imports, so it was positive. And then uh, with the association agreements, uh, we see a small positive effect. And here, uh, the lag stays positive. Okay. Um, then we also, I also categorized it by region. Um, and here again, we see a different effect. So here I took the notion that the EU has the trade agreements, so they have the neighboring countries, then you have uh, the Eastern European agreements, then you have the Euromed agreements, uh, then you have um, distant agreements, which would mostly be uh, the agreements with South Korea and uh, Latin America. And then uh, we also have a region uh, that is the African countries. And so here we see a big uh, positive effect of uh, the neighboring countries, the Eastern European and the Euromed trade agreements on imports. Um, these are partly offset by negative lag effects. Um, yes, here they are. Um, and then um, the distant uh, trade agreements don't have a very big effect. Um, and then uh, this is the African countries. Maybe I should change the name of the variable. Um, because they're not all former colonies. Um, here we see a negative effect um, on those imports. Um, this is imports, and then we can again look at the exports. Um, so here uh, we see again a positive effect of the neighboring and the Euro Mediterranean um, trade agreements. Um, now we see um, a small positive effect of the distance trade agreements, uh, especially on the intensive margin, and it's partly offset by the extensive margin. Um, and then the former colonies are um, positive, but not statistically significant. Um, yes. I think it's interesting uh, to see the difference between here the imports and the exports. The exports are 
more positive and we have more negative sort of inputs. Um, and then we look at uh, each um, trade agreement separately. So on the left hand side you have the imports and this is the effect on the exports. Um, the percentages next to the bars are the share of uh, each country's uh, trade. So yes, well we're almost there. Um, so uh, that indicates how important it is. Uh, for example, um, Cairo and Palestine have a big uh, positive uh, impact on imports. At the same time, their trade flows are really small, so not that important for Europe. Um, and then, um, yes, um, also we see at the export side that uh, Palestine and Cairo do pretty well. Um, they're sorted, so um, when you add both margins up, the biggest one is on top. Could you say again what is the difference between the two blues, the light blue and the dark one? Oh yes, sorry, I didn't put it. Uh, the light blue is the intensive margin and the dark blue is the extensive margin. Yes. Again, space constraint of the <laughs> slides. Um, yes. And then um, this is um, the impact on the individual European countries. So uh, this is for uh, preferential trade agreements. So here we see that um, the impact of preferential trade agreements is quite homogeneous on the different European countries. Um, it's quite small, um, as we saw before. Uh, so again, on the left, the imports, and on the right, the exports. Now, uh, when you look at the FTAs, we see already a bigger um, dispersion between the countries. Um, also, the effects are, uh, especially for the exports, are uh, more positive. And then uh, we can also look at the graph for the customs unions. And this is this one. Um, so again, the results here are a lot bigger, especially for the exports. They're quite positive for the imports. Um, there are a lot of countries that <coughs> seem to have negative effects. And this is just a good comparison. Uh, this doesn't include the lags? Yes, this does not include the lags. Um, because we have a lot of uh, results that are not statistically significant, so if you add them up, it might change. Um, this is just a contemporaneous. I have a table with all of them, but if you put it in a graph together, it mixes the results, so that's how you can do that. Um, yes. And then, um, this is a little bit on uh, the problem of the endogeneity. Uh, so I also uh, repeated all my results with first differences. Add results are uh, very, very similar. So that's already uh, one um, indication that we don't really have an endogeneity problem because if there would be endogeneity, then um, first differences and um, uh, fixed effects would be biased in opposite ways. And then second of all, we see that here, when you look at the, the leads, um, only the leads uh, for the extensive margin of the customs unions um, is significant. And then here we looked at uh, the anticipation effects, and here again we see that um, there are anticipation effects. So uh, agents tend to anticipate the coming into force of a trade agreement, and then this is for exports. So here, there's no endogeneity uh, problem whatsoever. And then the conclusion, um, perfect timing. So um, the PTA, FTA, and customs unions dummies hide a lot of heterogeneity across the integration agreements and also across the countries um, of the European Union. So we've seen that um, trade agreements with a deeper level of integration have a larger trade effect. Um, also, contemporaneous effects uh, are sometimes completely or partly offset by the lag effects. Um, sometimes we find no effect on the total trade flows, but then when you look at the margins, we see that there's um, opposing effects on the intensive and the extensive margin. Um, the impact on the European countries is not homogeneous, and uh, the anticipation effects mainly uh, play on the intensive margin. That's it. <coughs> Thank you.